Today we've got a new awesome QRP antenna kit from John Jonathan KM4CFT. I'm going to show you how to turn this tiny little bag of parts into this really cool 10 watt SSB 5 watt digital awesome NFED half wave or you can make it a 9 to 1. Super awesome antenna. We're out in the field right now. Let's show you how to make this thing. So obviously we're out in the field right now. We're gonna magically whisk back home. I'm gonna show you how to make this antenna. We're gonna come back out here. We're gonna tune it. We're gonna get on the air. We're gonna see what it does. And spoiler alert, I really like it. Can you tell I'm excited? So let's get to it. So this is the kit that we get from KM4CFT, Jonathan. And it's just this tiny little bag of parts, but let's crack it open here. Now, this is a prototype. I want to mention that. He, he, he wrote me a little note here basically saying this is this is revision A board. Uh, so with this version that I have, I can't make a nine to one uh, because one of the holes on this PCB was a little small on the ones that he's selling. He's fixed it, so you can either make a 49 to one or a nine to one out of this kit. So just want to get that out of the way. So let's take out the parts, make sure we got everything here. So we should have our PCB. We should have our BNC female connector. We've got our toroid. This is a 50-43 toroid. Uh, we've got a 100 picofarad capacitor. This is our 28 gauge magnet wire, a length of heat shrink tubing, and a length of, uh, I think this is 26 gauge Poly stealth wire. Now I'm just following right along with the instructions and the first thing uh, that we're going to deal with is this poly stealth wire. He says fold it in half and cut it because you can use, we're going to use this, you can use this for the counterpoise as well as splicing this to your actual uh, radiating wire. Now I'm, gonna, I'm not going to put the counterpoise on here. I don't use a counterpoise for my NFED half waves but you have two spots here, right here where it says CP, that's where you would solder the counterpoise. We're only gonna focus on this antenna, so that's what I'm going to do. So I'm gonna discard that other bit of wire there. And we're just gonna strip off a tiny, tiny, tiny little bit of wire there. And we'll go ahead and solder it right in that hole there. Beautiful. Now we're gonna take this wire, and we've got these two holes here, that's for our strain relief, so I'm just gonna feed that down, and then back up the other side, like such. And I've got a little bit of wire sticking out there, so I'm gonna tidy that up with my taco flush cutters there. Next we're gonna wrap the toroid, so we're gonna get our magnet wire, and we're gonna fold about three inches and make a little loop here, like such. Now, typically with, uh, when you're winding transformers, it's recommended to twist this wire for the primary. He's not doing that in the instructions, so I'm not gonna do that here. We'll see what happens. And we're gonna wrap three turns with this primary I'm gonna leave a little bit of this wire out because that's gonna need to go through the uh, PCB. So let's see how poorly I can wind this. Ooh, ooh. All right, so there we have our three primary windings. Okay, I definitely did not rewind this off camera. So we've got, this part's gonna go to the ground. We wanna have this second wire kinda in the middle here. And then this extra wire, we're gonna wrap around uh, 18 more times to give us a three to 21 turn ratio, which works out to a, a one to seven turn ratio, or seven to one turn ratio. Just like that. We'll spread them apart a little bit here. Make them a little more 
even. So, something like that. It ain't perfect, but it's honest work. The next step is to install the toroid onto the PCB, but before we do that, I'm gonna go ahead and use a knife and just kinda scrape some of the enamel off of the magnet wire. The soldering iron should do a pretty good job of melting it, so this step isn't 100% necessary, but might as well. So we've got a little bit of metal showing there now, you can see. Now you can see on the back of the board, we have in, out, and ground. So the center here is gonna go in that ground hole. This longer wire is gonna go through the out, and the shorter wire is gonna go through the in. I'm actually gonna cut this little loop off because that's not wanting to go in the hole. That's fine, we don't need that anyway. There, and the other one, maybe. Oh, come on, little buddy. There, so it should mount like that. I'm actually gonna scrape a little more of this enamel off since I know exactly where they're gonna make contact with the pads. Now we can go ahead and solder these. Beautiful. Just clip the extra wire off. And that is how that's done. Now we can check, make sure we actually did it right. These actually should all have continuity between the two, because that's just how it works. So we're good. Now we're gonna take our capacitor and install that, and we don't need all of these leads, so I'm just gonna cut it right at the paper. And you can see we've got two holes for our 100 picofarad capacitor. And we just slide it in thusly. We'll go ahead and spread apart the legs a little bit, keep it in place. Just like that. Beautiful. And then I trimmed these two nice and flush as well. Our last step is to install the BNC connector. And that's gonna fit, you got the two legs and then the center, so the two grounds and the center. So that's gonna fit just, come on, like that. Now this kinda wants to move around and my OCD is getting the best of me. So he recommends tacking the center pin to hold it in place, but I'm gonna do one better. I'm actually gonna put this in my little vise to clamp it down just just gently enough to hold it. And then I can actually angle it down. So here we have this right here is the center conductor. I'm gonna solder that first, and then we'll tack the grounds. And by doing it this way first, we can ensure that the center conductor is nice and tacked in, and we won't have to worry about anything not being flush to appease our OCD, so that's good. Now I'm gonna use my vise. This is just a cheap Harbor Freight vise that articulates quite well. Very, very loosely clamping that in there. So now we can attack the ground of the BNC. Now these grounds are gonna take a bit of heat, so be patient with it, because they're a bit thicker metal. So take your time. There we are. All right, now we got a nice, nice flow there until I screwed it up. Okay, beautiful. Now we just have to do it on the second one. All right, that'll work. And once this cools down a bit because I drowned this in flux, I'm just gonna use a bit of isopropyl alcohol, clean off these connectors, get all that flux off of there. And that should be good enough. Next, we can do one of two things. We can either go ahead and put the heat shrink on it, or we can connect our radiating wire. Now, keep in mind, he doesn't supply the radiating element wire. You need to have your own. I'm gonna use some of this Soda Beams uh, 26 gauge wire. I really like this. This is the high vis You get like 100 meters 
for like eleven dollars, and then I think it's like seventeen bucks to ship to the states. So, like twenty-five bucks roughly, you get a hundred meters of this wire, and it's awesome. So I'm gonna I'm gonna do this first. I'm not gonna put the heat shrink on until I get this outside and tuned, in case I want to make any adjustments and spread apart these wires. That that sometimes can affect how the antenna tunes. So I'm gonna do my poorest attempt at a lineman splice on here, and we'll see how that goes. Before I put them together, I am going to put on a bit of heat shrink tubing. This is my own heat shrink. He doesn't supply any of that uh, to put the radiating element, element on, but that's okay. So we'll twist our wires. Electricians don't hate me for how bad this lineman splice is going to go. Yep, sure. Terrible, I know, but it's good enough. It'll hold. And then just a wee bit of solder on here. And that's connected. Slide that over. And that'll do. Now, I left all of this connected to this roll of wire here, so I can just bring this whole darn thing out into the field, and then when I get out there, I can uh, run this out to length and tune it up. So I'll see you there. All right, so we just cut 70 feet of wire for the antenna. We're gonna hook it up to our Rig Expert Stick Pro. I'm using 50 feet of RG316. This actually came from ABR Industries. Got a nice little choke on here. Uh, you can actually save 10% uh, at ABR Industries with code KNMRD. I'll leave a link below if you're interested in some great quality coax. So I'm gonna take an initial, an initial reading on 40 meters. Let's see what it looks like. So there we are, way long as I suspect, 1.35 to one. Not the greatest, not the worst. So I'm gonna go ahead and trim this down a bunch and we'll see what happens when I'm done. So I'm not even done tuning. We're on 15 meters. He's a two for Kilo 8 Mike Romeo Delta Park to Park. Kilo 8 Mike Romeo Delta. Good afternoon, Mike. Got you about a 5.5 five today, bud. QSL? Yeah, Roger. Got you about a 5.7. I'm just pushing uh, five watts out of a new antenna that well, I guess I'm done tuning because it works. I'm in uh, Kilo 3019. Yeah, uh, I'd say if you're pushing five watts through a new antenna, she's working just fine, my friend. Keep there you go. Help. Hey, thanks so much, man. It's a privilege to work yet. Have fun at that twofer, and uh, we'll uh, catch you on down the log. KD9YOD, K at MRD 73. Have fun out there. 73, pull it on, brother. There you go. All right, so it works. <laughs> So here's the deal. I wasn't done tuning this antenna. I was just tuning on 40, but I wanted to take a look at the other bands. So I, I went to 20 and 15 and 10 and they looked good. 40 was still long. Well, take a look at this. 40 is still long. Like it's resonant below, okay? But 20 looks absolutely fantastic. 15's pretty good, right? Still looks, it's a little long. But 10 is looking really great too. Now, if I cut this anymore, 20 and, and 10 would go higher. So I wanted to just see what the radio thought. So I've got the, the K6ARK CW key out here, and I was just keying up on CW across the bands, and the radio is really happy. Now, I understand there's some loss in the 50 feet of RG316 that I'm using but not much at these low frequencies. So let's take a look at the SWR on the radio. It's happy. So here we are, the low portion of 40. We're on high power, hence the no uh, power indicator down there. No SWR. So let's go up a bit. One bar. Let's go to the top. Two, S two SWRs. All right, here's 20 meters. Well, we'll start at the top. Nothing, okay? Let's go down a bit. Nothing. 
nothing. 20 is fantastic. 15 meters. Let's go down to the bottom. Let's get on C-dub. Nothing. Nothing. Where's the stop? 450? Nothing. No SWR across 15 meters. There's 10. One at the bottom. Nothing there. Let's get into the sideband portion. Nothing. Nothing. The analyzer said it was resonant at like 28.6. It is. Look at that. I mean, the whole frickin' 10 meter band. That's insane. So I just hopped on the air, did a quick POTA activation, uh, just on 20 meters, and spotted myself, called CQ, and I started at 1819, and at 1826, I made my 10th contact. So I'm gonna say this is a success. I got, well, 12 contacts today, because we got that twofer uh, earlier. But uh, yeah, just calling CQ with five watts, this tiny little thing, I went and touched the toroid. It wasn't even, wasn't even warm. Uh, it is, I don't know, it's probably about 60 degrees out right now, so it's, it's a little chilly, but yeah, this thing's fantastic. So let's go back home and wrap it all up, and uh, we'll see you there. All right, so now that we are happy with the antenna, uh, there's only one thing left to do, put some uh, heat shrink on it. When I was out in the field, I did put, uh, I did kind of try and separate these, make them a little more even. I know that I didn't actually succeed at that, but uh, I'm happy with this, so we're gonna go ahead and put some heat shrink on it. and and. When I separated this, it really didn't do a whole heck of a lot, so uh, I am just going to go ahead and heat shrink this and call this a completed antenna. And there we have it. That is a pretty awesome looking antenna, if I do say so myself. And lastly, in the instructions, Jonathan was kind enough to leave a link to that wire winder. This is designed by the one and only Adam K6ARK. I, th I 3D printed this out of some uh, PLA tough, and this just snaps the BNC in there, and then you can just wind all of your wire thusly. And a little Velcro strap, and we are all done. So there we go, Jonathan, thanks so much for an awesome antenna. Guys, if you want one, there's links in the description below.